This episode of See Tally Run is brought to you by FitSock and M Tech Results. and Carrie Tellefson, and today I'm doing strength training with Kirk DeWitt at Lions Gym. So let's get after it. Why are we doing general strength training today, and how are you going to help me get this baby belly off and help me train for this marathon? Oh, well, you know Miles are going to help get that off. No problem. She's worried. You're worried about yeah, trimming up. It'll happen by New York or New York. Yeah, well. Twin well, cities. Right. Uh, you're going to be ready to go. But um, I think strength training for marathoners is actually very important. Um, as runners, we we run it kind of in a straight line. Mm -hmm. and, and often we forget about the lateral movement that supports uh, everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the biggest gift you can have is staying injury free, especially when you're putting in so many miles. So really I think strength training should be geared towards strengthening those supporting muscles, uh, some of the things that tend to be weaker in runners, so you can actually endure the marathon. Mm -hmm. If you stay injury free, that's the key. So how are the exercises today gonna help us with this injury prevention? Yep, absolutely. Um, well, I think typically uh, runners do anything they can to uh, use their hamstrings and glutes less. You okay. see all sorts of funny running forms out there. You've got people that run knock knee, they're pronating, they're supinating, uh, they're doing the old marathon shuffle, mm -hmm. which I think some people are used to seeing. Um, so really, it's, it's just about finding uh, your stride and working on uh, the things that are naturally weak. Right, so the first exercise is a single leg deadlift, okay. uh, focusing on the hamstring. Uh, and the glutes. Okay. Uh, you always hear of people pulling their hamstring. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because typically our quads are a lot stronger than our hamstrings. Okay. Uh, so as a runner, it helps have power there, it helps have uh, control and strength there. Sure. Um, so what you want is you want to get on one foot here. Uh, arm can hang straight in front of you. You want to keep your uh, head and back in a good line. Other foot's going to come out. You're going to come down, keep a slight bend in your knee. You're going to feel a big stretch back there. And then back up just like that. We have the same arm, same foot, yep. with the weight in the foot, and then we're going to slight bend yep. and just bend forward. Yep, bend forward. Try not How to bend the knee too much. Leg? That's is not the, so bad. Is yet. It you can just to be extend straight that. Or yep, you, I like to have it come back. It doesn't really matter as long okay. as you're keeping your back straight. Slight yes. bend in that knee. You're almost going to feel like you're getting a hamstring stretch out of it. Oh, yeah. I and then there. pull right back up. Okay, next thing. So, next one. Yes, we're doing a single leg bridge. Okay. All right. So, we're going to lay on our backs on the ground. Okay. <clears throat> Crack, crack, crack. Right now, I'm good, are you good? <laughs> I was cracking everywhere, <laughs> old lady. Um, so, uh, hands at the side, just kind of stabilize. You can have one leg up off the ground. I don't like to really straighten it or anything, and just as long as that foot's off the ground. And then we're coming up and we're squeezing with our glute, coming all the way back down. Just barely let that butt touch the floor and come back down, yep. And we're really looking to squeeze on top. Okay. So every time we do this, we're coming up, pausing with that squeeze, and back down. And really with this carry, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. The more you squeeze, the more you benefit. All right, well, uh, next I wanna focus on your hip flexor. Basically, uh, the insertion sort of into your pelvis, okay. your upper quad muscles. Um, if you lift your leg, you can feel that really flex. If you feel the top of your leg, that is involved in every time you drive your knee. So to get a little more power in that, to help you become a more efficient runner, mm -hmm. uh, we want to strengthen that. Yeah. Uh, hip flexors actually get tired on people. They also get tight. Right. You ever suffer with that? Yes, yes. Um, so what I have is a banded knee drive. Okay. Uh, you can attach a band to anything that's stable. Okay. Um, which I have here. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to put your foot here in the band. You want to get that above your shoe. And then you want to lean against the wall, just like this. And uh -huh. then you want to dynamically uh, drive your knee. So I'll show you what it looks like. It's going to look just like this, way up. Oh, yeah. Just like that. And you're really working on strengthening what drives that knee through okay. in that motion. And you want to roll through these. I like to go for about a half a minute on each side. So 30 seconds, which is a long time. Tell me when it starts getting tired. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Right. So driving that. And then after you hit your 30 seconds, we switch sides. Okay. You go back and forth three times, taking minimal rest. So yeah. you're talking three minutes in a row of this. Uh, it's almost like doing like a, a little bit of an interval. Yeah. Intensity. I, so if it's this <clears throat> one's too hard, though, we can drop down. Yeah, or you can actually just bring the band closer to the wall. OK. But yep, you can change bands as well. All right, next we're going to do lateral lunges. Okay. Uh, no weight. Uh, again, we're very straight oriented when we're running, so yeah. we want to work those supporting muscles, keep everything in line. Be an athlete. Uh, prevent things like pronation and other things like, yeah, be an athlete. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so lateral lunging, we're going to step to the side. We're going to okay. stick that butt out, keep our weight on our heels, 
and then push back to center. So okay. we come to the left, we're gonna come left, stick that butt way out, get down, you're gonna feel stretching that inner thigh a little bit, push back to center. Then the other way, I'm gonna hit okay. your foot, <laughs> down, and then back to center, just like that. And then you can just alternate sides, stepping back, pushing that butt way out, and driving back to center, other okay. way, good. And then again, with these, I want probably about 20 each side. Now how slow, is this a slow one or do you kind of like to get the rhythm up? You can get the rhythm up a little bit uh, for demonstration purposes, we're okay. slowing it down. Uh, you can also add weight to this one as well, yeah. um, but with all this stuff, I would start without weight. Next thing we're going to do is a side plank, which works okay. on your obliques a little bit. Nice. We're also gonna add it, right? Right, post baby obliques. Yeah. Uh, and we're also gonna add in uh, a leg raise, okay. which is gonna work on that hip stability big time. Okay. You're almost gonna feel more in your hips than you are in your obliques. Uh, so we get down, uh, standard what I call side plank on the elbow, feet stacked just like this. You don't mm -hmm. want this hand touching the ground. And then what you're going to do is you're going to raise it up as high as you can. Okay. Don't let it touch that other foot or barely tap. And then back up just like that. Bring it down With this one, if you get to 12, you're probably going to be lucky. Us oh. runners have weak hips. Okay. We really do. Uh, when you hit 12, switch sides. So now what are we doing with this cool little step up? We're doing hip hikes. Uh, it doesn't look like much, okay. but it works those small intricate muscles that uh, stabilize the hip. Again, okay. hip keeps the knee in line, keeps the ankle in line, keeps the injury free, hopefully. Huge, yeah. Yep, so what you want to do is stand on elevated. It could be a stair at your house. It could be a, a box like this. Uh, with this knee, you look at this knee is locked. You want to let this hip just drop. So you're basically popping your hip and coming up just like this. You got to crank through these babies. So we're just go, coming down, squeezing up big squeeze. And you want to go through 20, 30 of these on a side. Okay. Just that small motion, you're working all those supporting muscles. Uh, again, strengthening what I call that hip girdle. You ready for the next one? Yeah. All right. I'll watch you do them first. All right, and I'll put you to the test. Okay. Uh, hanging leg raises. Mm -hmm. uh, simple. You see a lot of people do this in the gym. Yeah. Uh, it works your lower abs, which is what we want. Yeah. Again, I, th I feel like those are uh, very important when it comes to running. Again, supporting that hip joint and the girdle. Um, and then uh, those hip flexors get involved again, and we need those to be strong. So. Uh, you can find an elevated bar, mm -hmm. um, maybe you could jerry rig something at home, but in the gym, uh, what you want to do is you want to come up, grab the bar, uh, and then hanging, legs as straight as possible, you want to raise them up, just like that, oh, as high as you oh. can, and then good control on the way down. Okay. And then raise them back up, high as you can, good control on the way down. If that's too difficult for you, you can bend the knees, come up and squeeze almost into an I'll egg position. position. Yep, just like that. Um, kind of crunch it in on top. Because I'm pretty weak right now, uh -huh. let's do the modified. I like doing the hanging, you know, bent knee, but let sure. me see the, the modified version on the floor. Yeah, uh, modified on the floor, you can do this at home anywhere that you don't have a bar, or if that's too difficult. Yep. Um, just on your back. Oh, I like to put your okay. hands under your butt, just to stabilize your lower back. Um, and then toes pointed, just raising up and down. Don't let those feet touch the ground. Okay. Keeping your legs as straight as possible. Yeah. Uh, it's always a good option. It takes a little bit of stress off of those abs and hip flexors. Okay. Um, but still works, yeah. So just like that. So Kirk, you just kind of busted my butt now through you know seven, eight exercises. Uh -huh. What's the last thing that you would do in the gym before you you know took off for the day? Yeah, uh, I think upper body balance is important. Mm -hmm. uh, we do use our arms, and our upper body do carry us, especially mm -hmm. when we get tired. Uh, so end the workout with some push-ups some pull-ups or lat pull-downs if you can't do pull-ups, um, just to stay balanced. Okay. I think it's important to maintain upper body strength, uh, so I'd want you to do uh, some of that stuff too. You're kind of bringing back some old school stuff with a little new twist. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's basic and simple works for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you can tweak things once in a while. Okay, well, I know that like we're airing this the same week that The Bachelorette is winding up, winding mm -hmm. down, so can you tell us who your pick is for Dez. That's the only thing I know is that okay. Dez is there because I have not been able to watch right. it. Well, they just had hometown dates oh. uh, last night, which is when I got oh. the axe. So I cried a lot last night. Are my eyes puffy? Yeah, they are a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was sorry. reminiscing. Um, but uh, I'm skewed because I know I know who wins. Oh, you do? So I have a very skewed viewpoint. They let you guys know? Well, no, it's, we have the Bachelor community. Oh. And we, you know, we're gossipers, so oh. who's my pick? Yeah, I'm so, I can't even tell you because then I'll ruin it for everybody. So oh, okay. they're all great. Okay, so where are we gonna see you next? Are you gonna be on like the bachelor pad again or any of that no, stuff? No, bachelor pad got canceled. Oh, I see know. how up I am on this uh -huh. stuff. Uh, I uh, am on the CW Twin Cities, nice. a co-host there. Uh, and then if you want to find more about my training, you can go to kirk-dewint.com. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, yeah, and hopefully course. next time you see me, I'll be 
flat belly and no baby bumps. So. And just carrying that 100 pounder around like no, no big it, deal. <laughs> that's about how much Everett weighs these days. So <laughs> thanks, Kirk. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining me for strength training with Kirk DeWitt. Get after it. Okay. There's a 100 pound weight right here, okay? <laughs> All I want you to do is pick it up and just carry it around the room for like 15 <laughs> minutes, okay? So, I can handle that. Right here, here. <laughs> this is the true test. Okay, ready? Yep. One. I just want you to carry two, that baby around. Three. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Get it! Ah. All right, now just start walking around for a while. <laughs> I'm not moving anywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh I thought goodness. it was worth a try. Hey, but if you take, let's see, where's a 30 pounder? It's not quite uh, as tough, but yeah, we have those. So take this and uh -huh. try and run with that, and that's what I was doing just six weeks ago. Really? So like, like something like <laughs> yeah. something like this? Yeah, exactly. It I was think I could probably run a seven-minute mile like that. <laughs> oh, that's the next episode with Kirk. I'm going to make him run We're going to do it. <laughs> thanks, Kirk. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Get after it. You get after it. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. I don't know what I was doing there. <laughs>